This program is sponsored in part by the Elizabethtown College Summer Scholarship, Creative Arts, and Research Projects. Elizabethtown College. Educate for service. Hey, Professor, I have a quick question for you. Yes? So according to this text, it says that moving clocks run slow? According to special relativity, moving clocks run slower. So wait, if you're saying I measure a, a speed when I'm over here and somebody else measures a speed over there, they're going to be different speeds? Let me just stop you there. Obviously, the room has to shrink by the same fraction. What do you mean the room has to? What is he talking about? That was a reenactment of a 1980 encounter with my introductory physics professor at the time. Until that encounter, I was a computer science major. Not only did I change my major that very day to physics, I went on to do my PhD thesis in general relativity. In this episode, I will show you how no preferred reference frame leads to a dynamical explanation for special relativity, whereby twins are both the same age and not the same age. It's called the relativity of simultaneity, and it's the result of constraint-based explanation, as I explained in episode two. In this case, the constraints are the postulates of special relativity. Uh, let me give you a little background. At the end of the 19th century, there were two major outstanding problems in physics, and physicists believed these two problems would be quickly solved using existing physics, thereby bringing physics to a close. Instead, the solutions of these two problems required entirely two new theories of physics, which we call modern physics, or Einstein's double revolution for Smolin. One problem led to special relativity, which then led to general relativity, and that's the topic for this episode. The other problem led to quantum mechanics, which then led to quantum field theory. I'll get to that uh, quantum mechanics after dealing with the mysteries of general relativity in the following three episodes. The first problem stems from the prediction by Maxwell's equations of electromagnetic waves propagating at one over the square root of epsilon naught mu naught, uh, that is the speed of light in vacuum. Now that's not a coincidence since light is electromagnetic radiation, of course. This evoked questions about the properties of the waving medium. Most prominently, what is our speed through this medium, called the ether? When experimentalists tried to measure our speed relative to the ether, they kept coming up with zero, aka the null result. In other words, the experimentalists always measured the same speed of light regardless of how the source was moving relative to the experimentalist. In order to account for this odd fact, many physicists tried to come up with a theory about how rulers shrink and clocks slow down as they move through the ether. But Einstein simply postulated it as an adynamical global constraint. In other words, what the community considered an explanandum, something that needed to be explained, Einstein posited as an explanans, the explanation. Uh, here are the two postulates of special relativity. Postulate one. The laws of physics are the same in all inertial frames of reference. Postulate 2. Everyone measures the same speed for light in vacuum. C equals 1 over the square root of epsilon naught mu naught, regardless of their relative motion. These postulates represent an egalitarian model of physical reality. That is, no one's reference frame is preferred. As I explained in episode 1, this means my sense experiences, per Einstein, cannot provide me with privileged access to the real external world, per Einstein. Uh, the real external world, AKA we call physical reality. This theme, no preferred reference frame, leading to an adynamical global constraint, will be repeated in general relativity and quantum mechanics. So what is the consequence of the adynamical global constraints or postulates of special relativity? As I alluded to earlier, in order that everyone measure the same speed of light, regardless of their relative motion, they must disagree as to the distance and time between events. In Newtonian mechanics, the spatial separation and time elapsed between events are absolutes for all observers. But in special relativity, it is the spatio-temporal distance between events that is the same for all observers. Let me explain conceptually. If you and your friends, all at rest with respect to each other, are moving relative to me and my friends, all at rest with respect to each other, then we will see your clocks running slow, called time dilation, and your meter sticks shortened, called length contraction. Of course, if all frames of reference are equivalent, then you and your friends must likewise see our clocks running slow and our meter sticks shortened. How can that be? Consider the following four events where time differences are exaggerated. Here are the four events that we're gonna be talking about. There are two sets of observer ants 
Joe and Bob will be the black ants, and Sarah, Kim, and Alice will be the red ants. And these observers will all agree on the details of these four events. In other words, Joe will say, yes, I was 20 days old when I met Sarah. And Sarah will say, yes, I was 20 days old when I met Joe. Don't worry about trying to remember the details of all these four events. You'll see them in the coming presentation. I should note that this example is modified from an earlier version by David Merman. He is also responsible for the example showing the mystery of quantum mechanics in episode 8. These two examples are then tied together in episode 9 for no preferred reference range to illustrate the underlying coherence of modern physics. So Merman was an important pedagogical inspiration for this video series. So let's look at these four events and see how the girls will see the boys meter sticks be short and their clocks run slow while the boys will say precisely the same thing about the girls. We'll start from the boys perspective where it's the girls that are moving to the right at very high speed and the boys are twins they're the same age so events one and two happened at the same time for the boys. In other words, 20-day-old Joe meets 20-day-old Sarah, and 20-day-old Bob meets 17.5-day-old Kim. The girls claim the distance between Sarah and Kim is 1,250 kilometers, while the boys say the distance between them is only 1,000. Therefore, the boys see the girls' meter sticks are short. Now, let's look at what the girls say. The girls say, no, it's the boys that are moving. And the girls are all the same age. They're triplets. So, yes, it's true, event two, that Kim was 17.5 days old when she met Bob, who was 20 days old. But that happened two and a half days before Joe met Sarah. It's events one and three that are simultaneous, according to the girls, when 20-day-old Sarah met 20-day-old Joe, and 20-day-old Alice met 22-day-old Bob. The boys claim the distance between them is 1,000 kilometers, but the girls say, no, no, you see here, it's only 800 kilometers. The boys' meter sticks are clearly short, and the boys' clocks are clearly running slower because the girls aged two and a half days between event two and event three, while the boys, Bob, aged only two days. And now we have to see how the boys say the girls' clocks are running slow. And we see event four. 24 and a half day old Sarah meets 25.6 day old Bob. And so the boys say, look, between events one and four, Sarah only aged 4.5 days while we aged 5.6 days. Clearly the girls' clocks are running more slowly than ours. If neither frame of reference is to be preferred, then the girls and the boys must both be right. That means events 1 and 2 are simultaneous, while events 1 and 3 are also simultaneous. Simultaneous means coexisting or co-real. So 20-year-old Sarah is co-real with 17.5-year-old Kim per the simultaneity of events 1 and 2. That means Sarah's past is as real as her present. Likewise, 22-year-old Bob is co-real with 20-year-old Joe per the simultaneity of events 1 and 3. That means Joe's future is as real as his present. The take-home message is that the past, present, and future for any frame of reference are all rendered co-real by other equally valid frames of reference. This is the block universe, the all-at-once view. You see what I mean? Think of space-time as a loaf of bread. Einstein realized that just as there are different ways to cut a loaf of bread into individual slices, there are different ways to cut space-time into individual now slices. That is, because motion affects the passage of time, someone who's moving will have a different conception of what's happening 
right now. And so they'll cut the loaf into different now slices. Their slices will be at a different angle. Recall Garrick's quote in episode two. Nothing ever moves therein. Nothing happens. Nothing changes. People are just in space-time, once and for all. And the world line represents, all at once, the complete life history of the person. Thus, this theory, special relativity, of modern physics suggests an all-at-once model of physical reality per Wilczek's challenge. That's what he was referring to when he said the God's eye view seems in the light of relativity theory to be far more natural. And we see that this block universe view stems from no preferred reference frame. This will also happen with general relativity in the next episode. In episodes five and six, I will then bring this all-at-once or block universe model of physical reality to bear on mysteries in general relativity created by the dynamical view. Now, I warned you in episode one by analogy with the movie The Matrix that the red pill would not be easy to swallow. Here you see that buying into no preferred reference frame, you have to accept statements like the black ants are the same age and they are not the same age. But as Morpheus said to Neo, Remember, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. Now that you've been properly introduced to the first counterintuitive consequence of a dynamical explanation, the relativity of simultaneity, I can show you what mysteries it resolves in general relativity. That is, if you're ready for further violations of your dynamical thinking and you're prepared to continue beyond the dynamical universe.